but I thought we would we would kind of start by you know how I met you and you know after I wrote the piece um, I just searched online and you have a prolific marketing sensibility to you and in in the SEO engines you populated right away I have about 7200 flutists in my database but I had never met you I'd never heard of you so it, it was very exciting to go to your website and uh, and hear you play and see you and I thought let me share this with you. And wouldn't you know, this delightful collaboration just took 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 off. I've been very grateful ever since. So I I, I thank you thank you for the relationship and our and our future friendship uh, with you and your husband. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, re a real privilege. I started to play music since I was four uh, in Ukraine in Ukraine, and then since six I entered to a special musical boarding school. Uh, in Ukraine, named after Solomia Korshelnitska, is an opera singer. So there are only four schools like that in Ukraine for extra gifted uh, kids uh, who have musical talent. And then the school is like 11 years, which includes elementary, uh, middle, high school, all in one place. It's uh, all music, accent on music. But we also had other classes like geography, chemistry, physics. Sulfedge in between music theory, uh, music harmony, and then after all of that, we had we would have I would have my flute class, flute lesson with my teacher and piano lessons. So that took me eleven years on that, and then I moved to Kiev, which is capital of Ukraine, uh, and fi I finished in in there my bachelor and master's degree in music, National Academy of Ukraine, named after Tchaikovsky. After that, I got an invitation for uh, audition and I came here and then I realized how my English was bad and <laughs> then everything after another, I, I got English classes and, and then I figured out that here is Roosevelt University and, and then I got my perf solo performance diploma in, at Roosevelt University with uh, Professor Graf. He was at the time principal flutist in Chicago Symphony. The courage it took you to leave your mother country and come to a very big city without a command of the English language. Can, can you just talk to other students who may have the same interests, travel from a foreign country to learn English, which is not easy? Uh, tell us about the courage. What, 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 where does that come from? Well, it came from since I was a little child. We were watching um, the uh, Cartoon Network, <laughs> some American channel with cartoons and American movies, and I was just so obsessed with American culture, including American music, and I just had a dream to come to United States um, and live here. And that dream was just following me all the time. And then when I had opportunity, I didn't even think twice about it. The advice would be if you want something strongly, just do it. You know, when you have a talent and, and a dream and it just like eats you up, you have to do it. You have no choice. What were those choices you did make after your formal education? Now you're in America. Um, you have to pay your fixed and variable costs. H how did you manage that? How did you adapt and be able to practice and be able to market yourself? And what, what was your process? What were you thinking? Well, I was thinking, first of all, I didn't have a lot of contacts. And for me to somehow, you know, let people know that I'm a flutist here, have, you know, opportunities to play somewhere meet different flutists, meet professors, maybe somebody would recommend somewhere. Participate in competitions was one of the key uh, steps, I would say, where I was able to perform. I won Luminarts, they were really helpful as well. Uh, they do a good job with marketing and inviting places. They uh, support talented young people who are uh, in between a gap between uh, education and professional life. They support financially. Then uh, another competition I won during my education was uh, Eolian Classics, where they gave me uh, opportunity to record my CD. That's as well a big step. So I would say 
a big part of competition and participating, applying. So outside of marrying your husband is one of the smartest things you've done. <laughs> what, what, would, what are the other things you look back on that you say, you know, those were wise decisions. They were intuitive. And I made the right decision. Could you highlight some of those for us? Uh, everything had a reason why it happened this way. I mean, I also have my two daughters and this just happened. And I'm glad that it's happened because I don't think I would have enough courage <laughs> to plan for it. <laughs> but it's just, you know, everything has its own time. It's um, amazing how much uh, balance and proportion comes to life when you have children. A great step was Roosevelt University to see, um, you know, American uh, way of playing and learning, performing. The education is different than was in, in Ukraine. Can you share a few points with our audience about how the education is different? So the, 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 the merits and demerits. I feel like in Ukraine where better things that we had twice a week lessons for your major instrument here is just one per week you also have here a studio class another good thing was in ukraine that we had assigned a accompanist that was going together with your professor we didn't have to worry or hire somebody to play piano for you you were already having somebody for free so that's much bigger, I would say, advantage in Ukrainian education that, you know, a company's piano player is very expensive here. I had to pay for extra rehearsals, uh, even for rehearsal in my class, in my lesson, flute lesson. So for a company to show up on my lesson, I had to pay for this, where in Ukraine, that would be a common sense. The piano would be given. And you married a pianist. Well, my husband is actually a professional conductor and a trumpet player. Uh, he had a great career being a principal trumpet player in a symphony orchestra. And as well, I'm lucky that he's pianist as well, playing for me my recitals. That's much helpful. <laughs> uh, I believe it was your husband who actually accompanied you for the premiere of the three Ukrainian pieces? Yes. And and he's American? <laughs> Yes. You know, don't don't be timid. Get on the. Get on. <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> there he is. He's coming into the. Oh, just here for us. There's the handsome man. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. But very nice to meet you, and thank you for performing the music, sir. You know, really. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure. We love the piece. We love learning it. We love uh, working on it, and uh, hopefully, we have a nice uh, uh, finished product for you. Let Let's talk about the piece. Let's talk about. Um, the the maybe some pedagogic insights you both have on to other people who wish to play it uh you provided the world premiere so uh i i just love to hear some of the challenges maybe you had or some of the some of the like i said pedagogic insights or tips or performance practices that you'd like to share oh i, I can i can say you know as the as the pianist that uh mm -hmm. the 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 biggest challenge i think is the the rhythmic interplay that was required in this piece especially the third movement uh and uh you certainly like fast tempos <laughs> uh so, so i've known uh, to write a few yeah, <laughs> yeah. uh so it it, it brings uh, an amazing energy to the music uh to to get the music at that at the at the tempos that you were you're asking uh but it also caused some issues in terms of the balancing of, of rhythmic interplay so we had to work on that that was a, an issue we did a lot of you know under tempo practice to make sure we, we knew each other's parts very well um and then of course you know the issue of style i mean it, it's my wife uh you know grew up with uh ukrainian music surrounding her and and probably the sound of ukrainian folk music was a natural thing for her whereas it wasn't so much for me so in terms of phrasing and expression especially in the slower uh movement uh she really took the lead on that and uh and had a, a beautiful way of of bringing the you know the the inner phrasing to life so it, i would say that the piece is it has a myriad of, of of expressions it's not just one for anybody's considering it it's just a great uh piece with a, a variety of uh, musical information and style and there it was a lot of fun to do 
Yeah. I remember no. playing as soon as uh, first time when I played this piece, it was so recognizable. So I would really um, uh, encourage people to perform this piece because it is very Ukrainian culture like uh, presentation is just, I don't know how you got this. <laughs> It's like so accurate. I recognize like melodies from Ukrainian folk music and these mm. Ukrainian uh, celebrations that you named mm. after your uh, first moment and Maslenitsa's Ukrainian holidays. This is amazing to perform piece like this uh, written by American composer. It just sounds so Ukrainian to me. Just mm. congratulations. <laughs> I, I have to say that is the most rewarding compliment because I, I I have a love affair for all cultures and my 15 flute sonatas, each one is written for a specific culture. So they have subtitles. So the Spanish sonata, the Italian sonata. One of the challenges I had was when Robert Langevin of the New York Philharmonic commissioned me to write a French sonata. <laughs> It was very difficult to culturally get into the French space. And I used a pitch collection, similar to, to the dodecaphonic period, but in my own way, I romanticized it. And I based my work on Toulouse Lautrec's Circus Prince of the Moulin Rouge. And it took about a month of hard metal thinking before the idea suddenly came to me so I could modernize a French neoclassical style. And then the other challenge I had was my wife's recital. She's got a doctorate in flute performance and she's Norwegian. And like Ukrainian music, Norwegian music is a is a violin-based folk music, correct? Yeah, absolutely. And, and Norwegian has a five-string violin if you go back hundreds of years and there's very little extant music. We have something from the 13th century. So I took little tiny motifs of that extant music from that early period 800 years ago and did my own modeling on them. And, and that's what I did with the three Ukrainian pieces to get into that mindset, cultural mindset. Um, but I was very, very concerned about the first movement because it's so Bachian. You know, I mean, I, I was wondering if you, that obviously must have came to you. And how do I create a Ukrainian melody with a Bach kind of accompaniment and point counterpoint style that would still maintain the flavor of Ukrainian culture? And um it seems to be maybe I was somewhat successful with that. I still I'm timid by my uh, my my uh, my my work in that sense. But I, I was wondering if you could share some some of your personal thoughts on the Ukrainian aspect of the first movement, whether it was more Germanic than Ukrainian or some insight into that. I would say it sounds like Ukrainian folk music put into classical uh, context. Context, mm -hmm. yeah, it's just yeah. like com uh, combination, like. Like merging is is very interesting, actually. Yeah, I don't you know, know. The, style, the, the the folk style is definitely there, mm -hmm. but it's not in a it's not presented in a folk way. Yeah, and this is uh, exactly what I like about your piece that is not like very like folky. Yeah, it's, it's I like classic. I think it's like an artistic rendering. Mm -hmm. I mean, so many times uh, pieces have that are you know quote unquote you know folk based or based on a folk culture. Uh, tend to be a little bit simplistic in terms of accompaniment uh, yeah. and what have you. And then they sound like pop music. Right. So th this, that, 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 I think, married the, the idea of a real serious aesthetic piece of yeah. music with within the context of that, that folk uh, culture style. Okay. 
Well, how did you go about arranging the concert? Let's let's talk about you know your choice of concert hall and uh, the type of public that came. Uh, just I'm sure that our viewers would love to hear more about that as well. I can talk a little bit about. We were as actually it was an invitation. They uh, we have done numerous recitals in the area, and we performed on uh, WFMT at, for the name Myra Hess series. Uh, so uh, quite a few people know that we give recitals. And so we had an opportunity. Actually, I was accompanying uh, a trumpet recital, and my wife did a duet with that trumpet player at this location, a beautiful public library in Elgin, which is just west of Chicago, just west of O'Hare. Um, and uh, so we had met the, the people uh, who organized that, uh, that series. Right. And it's a very well attended series. They have a beautiful little hall in this uh, in this library, it's practically a brand new library, and, and a brand new piano and a beautiful yeah. piano. Oh my goodness, just a, really? uh, a wonderful space. So as soon as they invited us, we jumped at the chance and we said, "Okay, we're gonna we're gonna not do just an only Ukrainian program, but it's gonna it's gonna focus on Ukrainian composers." We have the opportunity for the world premiere of your piece. And then we we did a couple of other uh, standard flu pieces as well, and and we had a full house, standing ovation. They loved it. They loved your piece, and and of course I always love my wife because she's she's a natural on the stage. What would you like to say, both as pianist and flutist, about what audiences are about to hear, and where it's being performed, and et cetera? Well, I, I would say that uh, they're going to hear a program that's sort of based on uh, Ukrainian music as it's as its core perform your piece we're doing a couple of uh, pieces by other by ukrainian composers the senko jana kolodu who's a still living woman composer in in kiev we're playing at a beautiful hall in a uh, pub public library in elgin illinois and uh, we had a nice crowd and uh, it was a, a great great opportunity for us to share a little bit about the music that, that my wife so dearly loves and i'm learning to love yeah Anastasia, tell a flutist how you prepare for concerts. Do you have a particular, you know, your 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 performance practice, your your rehearsal schedule? How do you prepare? Oh, uh, with my husband, we have very specific. We like to make lists. <laughs> we like a very specific uh, list what we practice uh, when we practice. So we rotate those pieces because the amount of practicing is big. So we want to make sure that we give enough attention for each piece to make sure that we are ready for 100%. And we just go according to the list and rotate the pieces like- uh, Yeah, I would say that you, we also do ind obviously individual practice yeah. as well. We, we kind of zone into the spots that are difficult and we spend more time on that. Uh, mm -hmm. My wife spends a lot of time practicing slowly and practicing with a huge sound uh, so that when she wants to, she backs off a little bit in the performance, it's, it's full and beautiful uh and especially getting the low register to speak the way she wants it so yeah. she's very shy about the way she practices but she is a very intense person when she practices and that desire to get exact the exact sound that she want comes out when she actually does it live in person well you chose wisely <laughs> <laughs> Both of you chose wisely. It's been just a pleasure. And I can't thank you enough again for playing the music. Thank you. Register today at ChristopherCaliendo.com and get two world music publications for the price of one. That's right. Select from our diverse catalog of world music, Tango Americano, Gypsy Americano, Flamenco Americano, Chamber Jazz, Western, Film, Sacred, and Classical Jazz. Enjoy hundreds of performances from our YouTube channel to make your selection process easier. Register here, simply add your name and email, and enjoy our two-for-one forever sale from our entire catalog. A thank you to you for 25 years of Caliendo World Music. <laughs>